Hello, here are some simple ideas to significantly grow your bottom line profit. So let me explain. It all starts, by the way, from understanding your numbers, which is why whenever I work with uh, anyone new, I always, first of all, look at their accounts, look at their numbers to see what the potential is. And if you understand the numbers, then this is how you actually then increase your profit. So if we knew how many times or things we sell during a year so that depends on the number of customers and the frequency with which they buy and then that's driven by our marketing efforts and how often we promote things etc so we know how many things we sell how frequently and we know how much on average people spend each time they buy from us so here we're selling a thousand times a year on average and each time we sell we're collecting 300 pounds dollars euros from our customers so that'll tell us our revenue is 300,000. There'll be a there'll normally be a variable cost associated with everything we sell. Not necessarily, it depends on the type of business, but generally. So here, the variable cost is 200. So that's how we work out what's called our gross margin, because our gross margin is the difference between the variable cost and the average spend per transaction. And here it's 33% of the selling price, the selling value. So therefore, our gross profit will be a third of the revenue, 300,000, which will be 100,000. Our overheads are 50,000. So that will be things like wages, salaries, rates, rents, um, depreciation, or all the other things that determine the running of the business, maybe depreciation. So that will tell us our operating profit is here, 50,000, because it's the 100,000 we already had. Take away the overheads, 50,000. So what if, forgetting all the other things, what if we could get the average spend up by 20% when people buy from us? Now, that doesn't mean everyone spends 20% more. What it means is some spend you know, a bit more, some don't spend any more, and some spend significantly more. So then you're thinking, well, yes, but I can't just put my prices up 20% because I'll lose loads of customers. So, okay, that's fair enough. You may not even need to put your prices up at all to get the average spend up by 20%. I can think of anything 20 ideas and upwards that any business could implement that works successfully to get people to spend more each time they buy from you <clears throat> so it could involve putting your prices up and maybe it should um but it, it doesn't you know there are other things you can do besides that and there's plenty you can do and the thing is for most businesses i would say that is achievable and maybe more so if we got 20 percent higher average spend each time that makes a huge difference to all the other numbers. We're not selling any more frequently. So our number of transactions hasn't changed. We haven't got any new customers. We haven't spent loads of money on marketing to get new customers in. We're not doing loads of promotions to get them spending more frequently. We're not doing anything with our costs. All of those things are things we could be doing, by the way. So, and they would all increase our bottom line significantly, but we're not doing any of that. We, we're just literally working on a few strategies to get the average spend each time someone buys from us up by 20%. The difference that makes is it actually takes our gross margin up from 33% to 44% because we're now making 160 on everything we sell, 360 minus the 200, 160 divided by 360, which is the sales price or the transaction value, that gives us a gross margin of 44%. So our gross profit now becomes 44% of that 360,000. So our revenue is higher and the profit bit of it is a higher percentage. But we've still got the same overheads. We're not doing anything to do with our overheads. We're not reducing them. And our net profit, our bottom line profit, would now go from 50,000 to 110,000. So it's more than doubled. It's 120% it's more than it was. So a 20% increase in the average spend per transaction, which, as I said, you could I could probably come up with 20 ways of doing that. That will mean, in a lot of cases, over 100% over increase on your bottom line profit. And it might not be 100% in certain instances because everyone's business has got different numbers, but it will still be you know, a hell of a lot more than 20%. So the starting point is to look at your accounts, see what potential is there, and then work out, the effect of just a few small improvements. And here we've only just looked at one area. So therefore, you come onto your mindset here. So the first thing I do when I work with somebody is look at their accounts, work out where the potential is. But then you need to get your mind right because you need to be believe that you can actually achieve this. You need to have a positive mindset. And you can achieve this by going on a six-week mental fitness training program, which takes 15 minutes a day. So I always make that an option for anyone who I start working with. 
So we look at the accounts, we send you on the mental fitness training program online. Um, and that way you can set the goals that you want to achieve. And the other thing you then need to do, which a lot of small and medium sized business owners don't do, is set the time aside to actually implement these strategies that we've come up with. So time management is really important. Now, the reason all of this is most applicable to a smaller business, small or medium sized business owner is because generally, if you're in the situation where you haven't got a company accountant, you know, financial controller, company accountant, and you haven't got other board members, you haven't got a board of directors, then you don't really you don't really get this sort of analysis done on your numbers. And you don't really get the opportunity to bounce ideas off other board members to, to develop your strategies. So in which case, you might be interested in talking to someone who could look at these figures and numbers for you. And you might also be interested in the idea of having an alternative to a board of your own, which is basically a business mastermind group. And if you're interested in finding out how that works, have a look at businessroundtableuk.co.uk or you can email me at bernard at businessroundtableuk.co.uk or you can comment or message, etc. So th that just emphasizes how much potential most small to medium sized businesses have got, particularly if they're in a position where they haven't got a board of directors that meets regularly and they haven't got a financial director who can undertake this sort of analysis for you. Hope you found that interesting and useful. Thanks very much for watching today.